What if I told you that every beginner video editing tutorial on YouTube is wrong? My name is Austin Minges and I've been a pro editor for over 20 years with a focus on broadcast TV commercials with budgets of $100,000 and higher. And today I'm gonna share what every other beginner editing tutorial on YouTube is getting wrong and how you should actually be thinking about editing as an absolute beginner. And if you're an intermediate editor or even an early pro, I think you should stick around to the end because you might learn something too. Let's dive in. Here's the first thing that other beginner editing tutorials get wrong. They start right off the bat bombarding you with software tips and explanations on where buttons are, and they ignore mindset. Before you start learning something new, odds are is that you need a mindset shift. That's because a lot of us, when we start something new, we think we need to be great at it right away. And that's simply not the case. So instead of judging yourself on how your first edit turns out, I only want you to judge the effort you put in. Meaning, did you start your first edit and did you complete your first edit? That's it. That's the goal. And the other great thing about a goal like this is that you are in complete control. And in this video, I'm going to give you everything you need to succeed so you can start and complete your first edit. And then just understand that every edit you complete after that, you will get better and better and better, especially with the tips I'm going to give you, because you're going to start editing by thinking like a pro editor right off the bat. Now this is where we overlap with other beginner editing tutorials, but not for long, because I think you only need a bare minimum of technical knowledge to start creating impactful edits. But I'm including this short section so you have everything in one place. First, software. I'll be demonstrating in Premiere Pro, which is what I use, and if you'd like to follow along in Premiere Pro, you can download a free trial, but you can also get software like DaVinci Resolve, which you can get on Mac and PC, and there's a free version, and that might take away a roadblock for you to get started immediately. Just know that the main editing software packages, whether it's Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or even Final Cut Pro, they all work fairly similarly at the basic level. So these concepts should translate no matter what software you're starting on. Let's get started. First, you need some footage. You might have footage you wanna get started on. Perhaps you shot a family movie or your own short film. But if you don't have footage, I don't want that to be a roadblock. So I'm gonna include a link to Artlist, which is my favorite stock footage, music, and sound effects platform. You can sign up for a free trial and download footage with a watermark that you can start editing with today. Let's to open Premiere Pro. I am simply going to give this a name. I'm going to call mine blank project and I'm going to choose a location for my project file. This project file includes all of your editing decisions and data. So choose a location and then click create. Now it's important to understand that your actual media like video and music clips live on your hard drive. So you wanna put them in a place where you don't have to rename that folder or move it because the project file is actually a small file that points to that media. So you see here, I have a folder on my hard drive called media and inside I have a video clip and a music file. And then in Premiere Pro, I wanna show you the first panel. This is called the project panel, and this is where you have all of your media. And look right here, add your media, drag media here, or import media to begin. Well, I want to make this as simple as possible, so we're just going to take these two files and drag it into our project panel. So now you see we have a reference of our video file and our music file. As you add more and more media into your project panel, you might want to organize it, in which case I am going to right click with my mouse and click new bin, and I'm gonna name this media. And then I can 
select this and move it into the media folder. But I want you to understand that the bins are not creating actual folders on your hard drive. It's just simply a way to organize your files within the project panel. So the next window I wanna show you is called the source window. And this window allows you to bring up pieces of media. So if I double click on this video clip, for instance, it brings it up in my source monitor. And then there are some buttons on the source monitor that are very familiar to you, like this play button that turns into a stop button. So I have just played through this video clip. Now I'm also gonna click on the music file and you will see the music waveform come up in the source window as well. And again, you can play it here, you can rewind, and play it again. The next panel I wanna show you is the timeline panel. And this is where you'll be doing most of your editing. And you open sequences in your timeline. And my favorite way to create a sequence is to right click on a piece of media and select new sequence from clip. Now you'll see we have our sequence here, which is this icon in Premiere Pro. And we also have our video clip and music clip. Now I wanna right click in my project panel, create a new bin, call it sequences, and I'm gonna move my sequence into that bin just to stay organized. Now my sequence is opened up in my timeline panel and it already includes the clip I clicked on to create the sequence from. So it matched the settings for me. So you don't even have to worry about that. And now I'm just gonna show you one tool that you need to get started. If you look down here, there's a tool panel and I'm gonna click on this razor blade, which I bet you can guess what this is gonna do. I'm gonna drag it onto my clip and wherever I click, it makes a cut. And then I can go back to my arrow selection tool and I can move things around. Now these two clips are two different pieces. I can select one piece and delete it. And I can also, with my arrow tool, I can change the in and out points of my edit simply by dragging the front of the clip or the back of the clip. But let's go to the blade tool, make a cut in the middle, go back to our selection tool, and now we have two clips that we can move around and order them on our timeline. And I have one more panel to show you before we start moving on to the real craft of editing. And this is the program monitor. This is basically gonna show you every frame that's playing from your timeline panel. So if I take my selection tool and I move my playhead, that's this blue line right here, and I move it, on to the clips, you'll see that wherever the playhead is, you see that frame of video and audio in your program panel. So let's go to the beginning of this clip and like in the source monitor, you have familiar controls in your program panel and you can play through the clips in your timeline by hitting the play button. You'll see the playhead moved through here and you see the result in your program monitor. Now, instead of pressing the play button, you can also hit the space bar to start and stop the playhead in your timeline. One more thing, the first clip we added was video only, and you see the V1, V2, and V3, that stands for video tracks, and then underneath in your timeline panel, you see A1, A2, and A3, and that stands for audio. Remember when we dragged in this music clip from our hard drive? Well, it's right here in our media folder. And to move this music underneath our video, I'm simply gonna drag it and move it onto one of these audio tracks. Now, when I move my playhead on the music and the video and press play, it will play the music along with the video. And you can do that with any type of audio, not just music. It could be voiceover, it could be sound effects as well. That's it. That's all the technical know-how you need to start creating impactful edits. In fact, I could have used just those basic steps to edit the majority of the hundreds upon hundreds of broadcast TV commercials I've edited throughout my career. And where other beginner editing tutorials go wrong is they just go on and on about software showing you every button and every tool and every technical feature, and they're missing the point about the real craft of editing. It's sort of like if you were teaching somebody how to drive and the first step you gave them was to memorize every part of the engine. It's just not necessary and it is indeed missing the big 
picture. So remember, software is just a tool. It's a means to an end, and that end is crafting a compelling story. And that's what you should be thinking about from day one. Now I'm gonna share the five editing criteria that I teach that I want you to start thinking about from the very beginning of your editing journey. I'm gonna give you simplified versions of each that you can start implementing immediately into your very first edit. To illustrate these five criteria, I've opened up a basic editing exercise that I put together, and I'll actually link to this footage below. It is Artlist, and I'll also link to a video of where I show this exercise in detail. But see, we still just have our media bin, our sequences bin, and then I have a sequence opened up here. Now, before you even touch your timeline, you wanna think about emotion. And I'm not talking about the emotion of the characters in the scene, I'm talking about the emotion of your audience. What do you want the audience to feel? So before you get started on your first editing project, simply think about what emotion you want to evoke in your audience. For me, this dirt bike footage, I simply wanted to evoke excitement in my audience. Now, perhaps you're editing an inspiring hike you went on with your kids, or maybe some footage of a car race, or maybe you're editing this dirt bike footage as well. Well, before you start, I simply want you to jot down the emotion you want your final audience to feel. It's as simple as that. This is called a target emotion. And this is what we're gonna have in our mind when we're making all of the other editing decisions throughout the project. So now you have a target emotion in mind. Now I want you to think about step two, which is story. Every edit is telling a story to some degree, and that doesn't mean it has to be a super complex story. For instance, with my bike riding exercise here, I have the dirt bike rider walk up to his bike, get on the bike, start up his bike, start riding, and then there's a climax where he does a stunt, this wheelie here, and then he rides off, and that's it. That's the story. Now the key is, I came up with that story before I started editing, and that actually makes the editing process a lot more efficient, but more importantly, it ensures your audience will stay engaged. So when you're thinking about those story beats, think about things changing throughout the story. And action step two is to write those down before you get started with editing. My third editing criteria is rhythm, and this is where you're actually gonna start editing. You have your target emotion, you have a basic story, outline, now you're going to start selecting clips, placing them in order, and deciding how long each clip is. One way to think of rhythm is the length of each shot in relation to the other shots. So if you look here in video track one of my dirt bike riding exercise, you'll see these three shots right here are all around the same length. They have a certain rhythm to them. And then these three shots are actually all a little bit longer. Not exactly the same length, but a little bit longer. And then we go into a section where there's four shots in a row where there's a new rhythm established. You see, these are all around the same length. So the third action step is I want you to try to think about creating groups of shots that are all about the same length. That will establish a rhythm to your edit. And now bonus points if you create a section where all the shots are, say, a little bit longer, maybe two to three seconds each, and then another section where the shots become a little bit shorter, maybe one to two seconds each. And that's gonna introduce something called rhythmic contrast, where the rhythm changes. And make sure that rhythmic contrast lines up with that emotion you're trying to target. My fourth editing criteria is sound. This is where your edits are really gonna start coming to life. You've got your target emotion, you've got your story. Then with rhythm, you've started placing your clips together, deciding on the length of each clip, establishing a sort of rhythm. And now with sound, perhaps you're dragging a piece of music into your edit, and then you're adjusting the placement of your clips to match the feel of that music. And now bonus points if you also find some specific sound effects to add into your edit that will really start 
bringing your edit to life. So these first three audio files are part of the music track, and then below I have specific sound effects, like our dirt bike rider's footsteps as he walks up to his dirt bike, and even some forest ambiance as we hear birds in the background. And then of course, the sounds of the actual dirt bike racing through the forest. Now I don't want you to get too overwhelmed, so you can certainly just add music to your first edit, but let's say you are making that inspirational hiking video that you shot. Well, maybe you wanna add some forest ambience to the hiking video. Or maybe your target emotion was anxiety because you have this rock climbing video and you wanna add the sound of rocks falling from a cliff to add to that anxiety. Those are the types of sounds I want you to start thinking about that will really help evoke your target emotion. My fifth editing criteria is action, and this is where you decide where to cut in and out of shots. And the reason I call it action is because I like to think of each clip as containing its own action. Maybe it's a person walking from one place to another. Maybe it's an eye blink. Maybe it's someone starting to talk and finishing to talk. Or maybe the action is even the movement of the camera. So let's take a look at some of the examples in this dirt bike riding exercise. Well, this first shot is all about the dirt bike rider walking up to his bike. So he starts taking steps and then he gets to his bike. And then I'm cutting to the next shot, which is about him sitting on his bike. So he lifts his leg and the shot cuts out when he has finished sitting on his bike. This third shot is about him looking up. It starts with his head down and then he looks up and then I cut to the next shot. This may seem simple, but by thinking about it this way, it's really gonna set you up to make professional polished edits. So the action step for step five criteria, which is action, is to go through and adjust your in and out points of each of your clips where you've defined a specific action to happen. You cut in right before that action starts and you cut out when the action finishes. Now I know this is really fast paced so you can bookmark this video and watch it multiple times if you need to as you create your first edit. And you might be asking, well, when do I go deeper with my editing software? Yes, there is a time to master your editing software, but treat it as a means to an end. Remember, the end goal is to create edits, to create impactful stories. So I would say, as your storytelling ideas become more advanced, like let's say you wanted to add some opening titles to your next edit, or let's say you wanted to add a transition. Well, then go and learn the software as a means to telling your story. But now, let let me summarize what you have put together today. One, you're gonna change your mindset and make your goal about the effort of starting and finishing an edit. That is all. Two, you're gonna grab your free software, whether it's a Premiere Pro free trial or DaVinci Resolve's free version. You're gonna grab some footage, maybe you have your own footage to start, or you can use an Artless free trial to grab some practice footage. Then you're gonna go through the very basic elements of your software so you can import clips, open a sequence, make some basic cuts, and watch things in your program panel. But then you're gonna to get to the real craft of editing. You are going to have a target emotion for your very first edit. This will serve you so well throughout your editing journey. Then you're going to jot down a quick story where things are changing throughout your edit. You are going to start assembling clips with rhythm in mind, where you're gonna have groups of clips that are all about the same length. You are going to bring your edits to life with sound, maybe just some music to start, but maybe you're gonna be a little more adventurous and add in some specific sound effects. And finally, action. You're gonna go through and identify the action of each shot and adjust your in and out points so an action starts at the beginning of the shot and ends at the end of a shot. Now, the only difference between you and me is that I've gone through this process thousands of times. And really the key here, the big difference between this video and other beginner editing tutorials is these are the fundamentals you need from the very start. Any great coach who's teaching a sport, maybe it's basketball or hockey or a great art teacher teaching painting, you gotta start with the fundamentals. You don't wait till later to teach the fundamentals. You teach them the fundamentals of shooting a basketball like a pro shoots a basketball from day one. And if you practice from day one with the right fundamentals, you're gonna be set up for success. So really my hope with this video is that it inspires you and gives you what you need to start your editing journey. And if you do complete your first edit, 
based on what I've taught in this video, please let me know in the comments. It truly will make my day. If this kicks off your editing journey, or maybe you're already on your editing journey, I invite you to check out my editing course at the link in the description. I go through these five editing criteria in great detail, and you get to apply what you learn to really cool footage and projects, and you get personal feedback on your work from me, which I think is the best way to fast track progress when learning any craft. Thank you for watching this video. Please give it a like and subscribe for more content like this. And I think you might like to watch this video next. Happy editing.